switching out the battery on my 07 Pilot. This is a AAA battery. Look at it. Not even three years old. And so we're replacing it with this Duracell AGM. I normally use um, AGM batteries. I've been using Odyssey, but I needed something today. And this hodgepodge, I'm not using both of these. I'm just using the 12 volt side to uh, maintain my radio presets and computer and all that stuff while I change it out. So we're going to get this one in. Got it from Batteries Plus. Oh, yeah, it's right on there. All right, got it installed. And there's some of the specs on this particular one for my 07 Honda Pilot. But this is just me going the extra step. I put it on the Snowflake or AGM mode on my SeaTech charger. And I don't know if you can see, it is full. It's up to step 7. And it doesn't go into 8, I think, for a few days. But anyway, I just wanted to top it out. And it was at 12.8. And so now it's floating at 13.6, so we'll see what it is off the charger. All right, with the charger removed, it's at 13.21 volts. Let's see how she starts up and how the charging is. All right, let's see how she starts. All right, where's the... Uh, well, there's no charging indicator on, so that's a good sign. Something sounds different. Hope it's not the alternator. Because my wife said it was driving really weird. Um with the weak battery. Okay, so after starting, oh, my alternator's not working. That's not good. Alternator's not charging. Dang it. That's bad news. We need an alternator. 12.66. Yep, this battery is supplying the power to run the vehicle right now, so, okay. Yep, I can hear the bearings or whatever. Alright guys, so I did pick up this rebuilt unit from uh, these guys in Tampa, Florida. This is not far from where I work, where I commute every day for my day job. So you can see, uh, where is it, the pricing, 30 bucks for the core, and with tax and everything, I was, uh, where is the pricing? There it is, 181. 68 and I will get back um, the core when I bring it back. What I liked about this over one of the cheaper uh, even alternatives online was this. The fact that this is a original Honda Denso unit rather than a cheap um, you know maybe a cheap aftermarket part that was rebuilt and you know, I feel like this is going to be a better unit, being that it's a, uh, you know, this probably came off of somebody else's pilot or, or whatever, uh, Honda. So, um, this place got really good reviews on Google. It's 
it's got five or 4.9 stars on Google reviews, so we shall see. Now I got the fun of removing and installing. So guys, there probably are better videos on YouTube to show you this procedure. I don't want to advertise this as a straight up how-to video. It's just kind of documenting uh, what I'm doing. That's kind of how I do things. I'm not claiming that this is the best how-to video for the alternator on YouTube. Um, what does make it interesting is I have my AMSOIL bypass filter that I obviously have to get out of the way. And, you know, I obviously want to leave the hoses connected if I can. I'll just, you know, lift it up, uh, probably suspend it, and uh, we'll get that thing going. Alright, so praise the Lord. I had the foresight to make the hoses long enough to allow the movement. I knew I would need to get this out in order to change the filter eventually. On a side note, that's uh, possibly coming up soon. We're going to be taking an oil sample, sending it to the lab, seeing if we need to change oil. So as you can see, the date on that was February uh, of 2020. The mileage, I think we've put on maybe 10,000 miles. But it is hard stop and go city driving, idling. And so here's the deal, 98.7% at 2 microns. The secondary filter cleans the oil, returns it to the uh, engine, and you can you know, greatly extend your engine life and your oil change intervals. So be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos. I did in detail videos on this filter and the installation and last year's oil sample, which was good. All we did was change the main filter and uh, top off the oil. And this car does use oil. It, it's kind of the thing with a lot of the late 2000s. This is an 07. It does use oil. It always has since we've owned it. And that was even before I installed any of the AMSOIL stuff. Um, so anyway, on another note, let's get some other things. We're going to have to... Uh, it makes it easier if you get your... This thing, the uh, coolant container out of the way and the power steering. Again, I don't want to disconnect and you can see I don't have a standard thing here. I have a magnifying filter on my power steering return line. Let's see what that says. November of, I think that says 1945K. So yeah, I did a video on the replacement of the power steering O-ring right there. Things sounded like the pump was dying and in the cold weather the fluid was thick and we changed that o-ring so that's another video uh, you might want to check out check out my channel guys and uh, subscribe and like the video help me out with an early like so anyway we're gonna you know kind of get these things to where we can move them around and lord willing get this alternator out um, again for precaution you should disconnect the battery and so I'm going to look for my radio code I hope I have it because like I said when I changed this battery the other day I maintained 12 volts with a secondary battery so um, hopefully I have the radi radio code so quick recap guys sorry if I'm repeating myself but it's actually been a few days since I've had time to work on this so I've got my brand new AGM battery on my maintainer and uh, just letting that kind of maintain things so I've got the as you can see I got my bypass filter out of the way my coolant recovery tank and my power steering's loose um, so I can move that around as needed I did take the belt off which is as easy as putting a 14 millimeter on that bolt right there and, and pushing back with a breaker bar toward the firewall and you slip the belt off. So I've started removing some of the uh, bolts here that hold, uh, let's see, 
as you can see some of these uh, wires here and things like that so I think I'm gonna take this bolt out for the AC line just to allow things to move around a little more and then uh, again my battery negative battery terminal is off I did find the radio code that actually took me a while but I did find it in the paperwork in the glove box finally so um, I'm gonna try to see if I can remove the power wires to the alternator there's a one under this with a nut on it and then there's a this one goes to the back of the alternator and a more you know you squeeze it and pull off the terminal and so that's where we're at I'm not gonna again do a step-by-step -step. I might link down below to a video that I watched uh, that's that's honestly better than this one um, I'm just kind of documenting what I'm doing here. This isn't meant to be a step-by-step how-to, but just kind of showing you guys what I'm doing. So for the power wires, uh, where is it? You can uh, you can see how nice and shiny the connections are because Honda covers them with these nice grommets. So you're just pulling these back. You remove that one, and then there's the plug down there. Got to do the same still watching well thanks guys um, but yeah do go check out the other guy but I appreciate you staying with me um, so I took off the the big power wire there and that's just a 12 millimeter nut and you can see right there on the alternator where that came off of this one I still I'm having trouble so I'm just gonna um, I'm just going to pull the alternator out of place and try to remove it at that point. But what I am doing is, this bracket here, there's a 12 millimeter right here, and there's another one uh, under, not this bolt, I don't want to mess with the timing cover, but it's under here, and I believe uh, from the other video that's going to allow this bracket to come off out of the way. So you can see we got a little more access to the alternator now that I have removed this little plate that was above it. Um, this bolt here has to come out to get the alternator off. And then this one here, um, you know, holds the bracket onto the engine. I don't know if you have to take this off, but it seems like it's really going to open things up as far as getting that alternator out. So, I know we've got another, I think it's a 14 millimeter, actually I think I can see it right there. Uh, down there to the left of the alternator pulley. That looks like that's going to be the bolt, the bottom main bolt for the alternator. I think that's a 14. Alright, so trying to get a view down in here. Okay, so that's our bolt, but look, we got wires for the AC compressor right there in the vicinity. So, just want to be careful. I mean, we don't want to do any harm to anything else. Let's kind of look around. I think that's an idler pulley, and then here's our tensioner pulley that you use to take the belt off. But, but yeah, with the alternator, I mean, that's... That looks like that bolt right there, so I think that may be the last bolt that's got to come out. Alright guys, so I pulled this little black plastic cover off. I think that's the computer there, so be careful with all that. Obviously you don't want to mess with that, but I've got my power steering reservoir kind of, you know, without putting too much strain on the hoses. and. Fittings, I've kind of got it over uh, somewhat out of the way. Taking this bolt out doesn't help a lot, but it gives you just a little more play in your AC line. So the alternator is, uh, I kept thinking there was another bolt, but there wasn't. You just got to kind of work it up out of there after taking the uh, 14 millimeter bolt out. This one here, which was actually very loose, or it was, it was not tight. It wasn't that tight, which was kind of interesting. So I don't know if this alternator has been changed. You know, we've had the car 
I don't know, three years or something. But uh, anyway, so so where are we at? So it's kind of up and out of its uh, position, uh, and I did take this the plug off the back uh, in this. So I just wanted to show you. This is kind of you know you, this AC hose is probably you know causing the uh, uh, the most issue. So I'm gonna try to finagle it out of here. And that's one thing that takes me so long is I don't want to do any harm, tear up anything else. So I probably take a lot longer just trying to be careful like that. So let's see how it goes. After much finagling, it is out. Okay, so let's have a look at it. It is a Honda Denso. I would assume this is the original unit. And uh, it does have some oiliness on it um, but it doesn't look like it's soaked or anything in oil uh, the guy was asking me that uh, when I bought the rebuilt unit and of course this one's going back for a core uh, so I can get my 30 bucks so there's that and plug and everything so but yeah this this part I had to wiggle it loose it wasn't wanting to slip up out of there super easy but anyway so there it is like I said I think this alternator would still be working if it wasn't for my cheap uh, battery that went bad the battery that came in the car I think a dead cell or a short uh, probably ruined the alternator so but there's that wire on top of the AC compressor. I was saying just watch out for that stuff. You don't want to damage that. Let's actually go down in there. Just for fun, we'll have a look. We'll kind of survey the area and see what we're dealing with. So there's your tensioner. There's your AC pulley and compressor. There's the little mounting area where the alternator fits into. So I'm wondering how tricky that's going to be to fit the uh, the rebuilt alternator into that to slide it into place. Let's have a look around here. I can't really see what we're looking at, but so just interesting to be able to look at this stuff, but uh. Let's look for oil leaks because um, this engine does consume oil. So yeah, you can see there's some there's some oil there. But I mean, it doesn't drip on the ground. You know, it just it seems to just consume it. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if that's something you your pilot does. Um, but yeah. So I guess just got through dropping the rebuilt unit down through here you know moving the power steering and getting it past this AC hose if I had to do it again I mean it's doable like this but if I had to do it again the power steering see this bracket right here that's the bracket that holds this uh, power steering uh, reservoir there's a bolt down there under the alternator you can't see it this second but maybe you can there's a bolt that if you take that bolt out I think uh, that little bracket will lift out of the way and that's honestly that this metal bracket right here is is kind of in the way so I think if I had to do it over again I would remove that making uh, making it a lot easier. So anyway, now we're going to finagle it into place. I think before we do that, we're going to go ahead and connect the power uh, cable, this one here, the snap-on one. And then, so we'll snap that in, and I'm going to try to get that thing in place. Hey guys, so unfortunately, I had to take the unit back out because I cannot get the bolt through there. And if you look, there's just a tiny ridge there where it, the things don't line up inside perfectly. So here's the bolt. This is the original bolt. It's the only one I have. 
that's going to secure the alternator down here and this is the one I took off goes in no problem well you see I cannot get the bolt through so I've been fighting with that for another 15 20 minutes which is kind of upsetting since you know I could probably have this thing nearly buttoned up by now but this bolt will not physically go through um, so I don't know see you can see that ridge in there I don't know whether to take this thing back to Hutchinson's which is a royal pain considering I'd like to, I don't know if I'm gonna get it done because I gotta get ready to go to work tomorrow but um I'm thinking about just getting something through there seeing if I can wiggle that get those collars to line up in there I don't know why that's off like that but it is so so guys here we are this is the brand or not brand new but the rebuilt alternator from Hutchison's in Tampa and you can see this whatever it is is misaligned the bolt will not go through uh, on the old see here's the bolt will not go through so I got the alternator back out of the car wasting more time and here's the old one drops right in just like it's supposed to so now I have to decide the time involved with taking this thing back versus just maybe drilling through it and so not real happy about this um, that drill bit will just if you rotate it actually goes through so I think if I just run this thing through there it might open it up enough but it's just frustrating but I gotta remember the Bible says the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God and so I need to uh, when I do go back to them with the core I want to let them know and I don't want them to blow it off but you know I want to be godly in how I present it well guys I sure am glad that I went to the Word of God and calmed down and uh, so anyway this is where I took got my core charge back for the alternator and there here let me give you the exact Hutch, Hutcherson Auto Electric 701 South 50th Street Tampa Florida so um, so yeah there you go with that and uh, yeah, I think it was, um, when I told them about the issue I had, they, they, uh, they apologized and everything and said it probably came in that way and they just didn't, uh, you know, basically they apologized for letting it go out that way with that piece in there, uh, kind of, kind of off like it was. Well, bear with me. I'm trying to hold a camera and look at this. But, so, a lot of good stuff in James. But, so, in regard to me getting worked up about the bolt not going through, I'm going to read this passage from James 1, starting at verse 19. This you know, my beloved brethren, Everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness in humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. But prove yourselves doers of the word, and not merely hearers who delude themselves. And it goes on, and it's full of good stuff.
And yes, Charles, I did make it to Mission Barbecue today. Um, guys, if you're if you have one of these near you, you need to check it out. They are big on service members and law enforcement, and it's really good stuff. So I'm glad I finally made it there today. Thank you, Lawrence. It was very kind of you to treat me today to the Mission Barbecue. So this is where I left off yesterday uh, when I had to get in bed to go back to work at my day job. But So I've got the one long bolt in. It's not tight. And I'm going to start putting the other, uh, the other bolt in and the bracket and the, the wiring and go from there. Get that belt back on. So just letting you know what I've done. I put in the the two bolts here. There's one that holds the bracket to the head or block and there's another bolt that holds the alternator to the bracket and the 14 at the bottom I got those tightened up. Uh, don't go crazy but you want them tight and then this this little clip that holds the the plug that goes in the back of the alternator. I don't know if you can see that too good with the boot on it and then we got the power wire, the one with the ring, and you put the bolt on. That's what I'm putting in here. Now, don't over tighten and twist that thing off. Um, and then from there, it's you know probably onto the belt. I would say at that point. All right, I got a lot of stuff tightened back up. I believe I have the belt on in the correct way. I had to consult some online images. But, I think, I'm sure what you guys can see right here, but uh, if this helps, this is probably not that helpful, but if you can see it all, the belt routing. So I have tentatively put things back in place. I believe the belt is on properly. Um, my bypass filter is still here. I'm not going to put it back in place just yet, uh, but it's fully functional. It's You can mount it pretty much at whatever angle. So I've reconnected the battery and we're going to see. Hopefully everything's good and we got 14 plus volts is what we're looking for. Uh, let's just go ahead and check. Sorry, I don't have my stand. Maybe I should have got it. No, I'll set you there for now. And let's just... I just want to see. I've been charging this thing with my thing it's been floating 13 point zero zero twelve nine nine so right at 13 volts I just took it off the charger a few minutes ago though so that's no doubt part of that reason but yeah brand new Duracell AGM it's literally started the car once and once I realized the old alternator was no good I, I haven't used it anymore so let's see what happens I'm really hoping everything's good. Roll down the window. Everything sounds decent. Um, yeah, the belts are spinning. I mean, I don't think they would work if it wasn't on there properly, so that's a good sign. And let me get voltage here. Sorry guys. Wish I could mount it there. I should have got my little tripod. I'm trying to do all this before I gotta get a shower, eat and go to bed for 
day job. 14.36, 14.35, praise the Lord. I know you can't see that in the frame right now, but hold on here. Let's see. I don't know if you can be able to see that on the screen or not, but 1436, 1435, if you can make that out. So, praise the Lord. Alright, so basically I just got to button everything back up, put this hodgepodge back in place, and uh, yeah, if you want to go check out my other videos where I install this in detail, and I even pulled a sample after 13 months, and the oil was good for continued use, we're getting ready to do another sample here soon and see if we need to change the oil or the filters or whatever, so... And one more time, there's my info. I am an Amsoil dealer. 146-3115. That's my website, my info. Uh, if you're interested in any of this, be sure to subscribe, guys. Hit that like button. Thanks a lot. Well, guys, I just prayed and started the car and it was a success and then I realized the camera was not on so I guess that will just have to be a moment between me and the Lord but I did pray that God for his name's sake that Jesus sovereign king of everything would bless these efforts and guys I did just change the starter in the parking lot of my church and um, guys if you have done anything on a car this is doable I did not remove the battery I did remove the battery cable but I didn't take the battery out I didn't I just push these radiator hoses to the side um, I'm sorry I did not document the process but there are other videos on YouTube I was just in a hurry and praying that this would work. This is what appears to be the original Honda starter and I replaced it. Uh, I wanted a rebuilt Honda from Hutchison's but they didn't have one and I needed one so this is a rebuilt uh, unit from O'Reilly actually. But praise the Lord. Uh, thanks guys. Be sure to subscribe and share. And again, this was never meant to be a how-to video as much as it is just documenting, you know, what's going on with me when I'm not selling synthetic oil. I'm driving a truck at my day job or doing this stuff. Well, guys, praise the Lord with me. I'm driving this car home rather than towing it or having it towed. I'm so thankful to the Lord and His grace. 